All right, let's go to Sunday night. Another Mark II yeah. game. Bills at the Bengals. Bengals by two and a half on the spread. So that was on the key number of three. Must books must have yeah. took some, uh, uh, some some sharp uh, money on the Bills to get off that three, uh, and it's back to two and a half. The total is uh, in the 47, 48 range. This game, of course, eight twenty Eastern on NBC, and the Bengals have been the second luckiest team in our luck rankings, the bills are 24. So there is a somewhat significant edge, uh, you know, 22 in terms of the differential and a 26 and a half percent gap. So that is the second best luck matchup of week. Number nine is the Buffalo bill. So, Hey, maybe that's, maybe somebody's looking at those luck rankings and uh, <laughs> yeah. that's why this number Hopefully. went to two and a half. But you also have uh, a luck total that's the second best over in terms of value mm-hmm. because you know Buffalo has scored three and a half expected points per game below what you would ex- uh, below expected, and then Cincinnati just over five points below expected. So we got a, a luck total that's uh, that's pretty high here as well. So could see s- some points and oh. uh, favoring the underdog Buffalo Bills. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it looks like you like kind of the, the Cincinnati lead game script uh, for your captain. Yeah. So I'm going with Joe Mixon here. Um, you know, he certainly isn't the optimal play in terms of medium projections, uh, but I, I think he could be under owned at least in the captain slot. Uh, I know you and I are both high on him in our rankings, you know, borderline top five back this week. Uh, so I think he, he provides nice leverage against the passing game. I think most people are going to use the receivers in this game in the captain slot. Uh, so I'm going to go with him here. He He's coming off a great game against the Niners. I think he specifically is going to benefit from Joe Burrow looking closer to 100%. Um, you know, the, the way this offense goes, you know, if they're scoring more points, that's going to benefit Mixon. Um, and this is, you know, a tough matchup on paper against the Bills. But, you know, their defense lost some key players. Uh, Daquan Jones and Matt Milano are on IR and they've been vulnerable against, you know, running backs. They've allowed the third highest rate of explosive runs or runs over 10 more yards. So this is a good spot for Mixon. So I think uh, using him in the captain slot could be sneaky. I don't think his roster ship will be too high here. Uh, So I like going with Mixon here. Yeah, I have Mixon as the RB4 to to open I had him at the RB4 to open the week. So, yeah, he's going to be one of the, the, my top ranked backs nice. this week. Just getting pretty much every backfield carry, uh, still getting most of the passing down work. And yep. this offense, the better this offense played, the more it benefits Mixon because he gets, as you said, you know, more more scoring chances. So, um, I, I was going to go Jamar Chase in a captain spot, but this is another one of these slates. We've got a lot of expensive players. Uh, I like kind of going a little bit – a down with uh, your your mixing call, so I am going to go instead of Chase. Uh, I'm going to go and instead of Josh Allen, and instead oh, of Stephon Diggs, Quentin Morris, <laughs> Reggie Gilliam, <laughs> uh, Joe Burrow, Ooh, Joe Burrow. So you know what we saw out of Joe Burrow last week that was a little bit eyebrow raising. He ran six times for 43 yards, including calling his own number uh, on one play. And I think he picked up, you know, eight or nine yards on like a draw, draw play. So Joe Burrow can kind of give you a poor man's Josh Allen type of rushing performance. Remember he had five rushing touchdowns last year. So it's not out of the question. And if you can catch like a Burrow rushing touchdown, lightning in a bottle, Mm -hmm. which is certainly possible then, you know, he could be the optimal play in the captain spot because he's probably still going to have to put up yardage. But then, you know, you're not going to have to spend up quite as much on, like, Chase. And remember, the Bills also just acquired Rasul Douglas, a very good corner from the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. So that makes it a little bit tougher uh, for guys like uh, – for, for those wide receivers. So you know Burrow is going to find a way. He, he looks great. He just, uh, you know, put up 30-plus against a very good Niner defense and, and could have had more, but they had some – some turnovers in the uh, in the red zone. So, uh, you know, 28 to 32 passing for Burrow last week. And then the six uh, carries for 43 yards. 
I, I think is very promising. So shouldn't be super popular, but if you get a rushing touchdown, you're a business uh, from Burrow. Yeah. So I'll go with him in the cap spot. Who you like for value? Yeah, I, I definitely like the Burrow call there. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, his number two wide receiver and T Higgins, uh, who really hasn't had a big game since week two. Uh, but it's definitely coming. I promise. Um, you know, he, he was banged up. Burrow was banged up, obviously. So uh, it's been a rough several weeks for T Higgins um, was potentially on the trade block. So with the, you know, the trade deadlines passed, he's still in Cincinnati. Maybe that helps in some way. I don't know. But uh, I like the idea of buying low on him here, especially with Burrow looking much, much closer to hundred percent. Higgins is one of those guys that has had a ton of unrealized air yards uh, you know, there was one game he had a shit ton of targets and he had, I think, zero catches. So anytime I could buy low on T Higgins, I'm going to do it. Uh, so I'm doing that here. Yeah. You know, you had Tyler Boyd get a touchdown. Who was it? Yosevash, mm. I believe, got a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah. He looks so, good for, you know, yep, next yep. season and beyond. But <laughs> yep. another reason why I also like Burrow in a captain spot, like if he throws, let's say he runs for a touchdown and throws to one for like Yosevach, you, you don't need him yeah. in a captain spot. So just like unique combinations. Um, and then, yeah, Higgins, you could kind of uh, include him instead of, you know, paying all the way up for Chase because. You know, he kind of is due compared to Chase who <laughs> went ham and then Boyd who got a touchdown. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, I got to go back to a guy that I loved last week because he was the only active tight end <laughs> for the Bills. And that's Dalton Kincaid had his breakout uh, game that we kind of all expected. And now he's getting a Bengals defense that ranks 29th in DVOA uh, against the tight end position. And, you know, you still have to worry about Josh Allen, who's playing a little freer now. Uh, they're going up tempo. You still got Diggs to worry about. You still got Gabe Davis to worry about. So uh, Kincaid is still, and that's why they drafted him, you know, early on in, in that draft this year because he's a guy who you can't account for everybody, right? So I think that Kincaid is in line for a potential another big game here after going eight catches, seventy-five yards in week seven and then five for 65 and a touchdown. And I believe he also got another end zone target that uh, was incomplete. Mm. So could he ha- could have had an even bigger day uh, could have Dalton Kincaid. So, uh, you know, love Diggs, love Davis. But I, again, I think, you know, with all the studs on this, on this, in this type of matchup, I think you got to find a little bit of value with, with these mid tier guys. So, you know, there is the potential for Kincaid to be the highest scoring bills receiver. Uh, on this slate. So love, uh, love Kincaid. Yeah. Poor uh, Joel Wilson. I thought they were going to elevate him, but they just decided to go with one tight end. Screw it. Uh, I, I think that obviously Kincaid's a great call, but um, you know, Khalil Shakir went off because they, they can't use two tight end sets when you only have one tight end. Um, so, you know, he ran a route. Uh, he ran a 72% routes run rate. So again, if uh, I don't even if Joel Wilson's active, I think Shakir, and Kincaid are both, you know, benefiting a ton from Dawson Knox being out. Yeah, I noticed that. Like when, when uh, I think when Knox was out, they used Sherfield more. But when hmm. no, when, when no, when Knox was out, they used uh, what's his uh, uh, Shakir more. And then yeah. when Kinkade, that one game Kincaid was out, I think they used Sherfield. I want to say it was oh. more. So yeah, like it's, it's it's been like a direct correlation with um, you know using more one one personnel uh, in this spot, but. You know, Shakir, obviously, after posting 92 yards. Yeah, unfortunately. You know, Going to be a little more popular than, than yeah. we probably want for yeah. for a, uh, a dark throw. Though he's certainly, you know, in play is just, you know, value option uh, regardless. But uh, who, do you, who do you like for, for a dark throw? Uh, I'm going with Latavius Murray here. You know, he's coming off a couple duds, but, you know, it's not like we're expecting much from him anyway. Uh, but he's always, you know, a threat to get like a vulture touchdown or a few receptions. They've been kind of... Uh, mixing and matching sort of how they use uh, James Cook and Latavius Murray. Now, you know, he obviously won't be an option if they do uh, activate Leonard Fournette, who is now on the practice squad. So that's something to monitor. Uh, Leonard Fournette himself might be a dart throw. But, you know, if if they decide to stick with James Cook and Latavius Murray for one more week, uh, you know, I think Murray is is going to be a decent dart throw here. Yeah, no, it's perfect time to buy. Like, you know, just when his job looks like it's in jeopardy, but you could have he could play in the in the hurry up, the two minute, 
the goal line, like pretty much every valuable fantasy situation Latavius Murray plays in. And, you know, talk about this going into the year, you know, D- Damian Harris was just, everyone just kind of assumed he was going to have that same role he had as like the one, what was he, 1A at one point, and then one, the 1B in, in mm-hmm. that Patriot backfield. And he's been the clear, you know, the, to be really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this year, uh, but until Harris, you know, went down with that unfortunate injury. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think you love buying in a situation like this when everyone's kind of uh, looking at him as if he's got one foot kind of out the door in terms of, of usage goes. All right. Uh, for my dark though, I'm, I'm actually, I just mentioned him. So let's go with uh, Yosef Ash. Because, you know, this is a game that could be a shootout. And Cincinnati will go five, four, five, four wide and five wide. Uh, that's something Cincinnati would do. And, you know, Irv Smith, I think, is an interesting one, too. But, you know, because he's had some struggles. I think he had a fumble, a couple drops. But Yosevash is going to be, uh, I think, still an unknown to people, even though he's caught a touchdown in back-to-back weeks. So he caught a touchdown going into the bye. Caught a touchdown coming out of the bye. So he has three NFL catches in his career, two are for touchdowns. He has one catch in the each in the last three weeks. And so he's clearly starting to see his role grow. Always remember, always look for these rookies, especially coming out of the bye, or you know, even sometimes, you know, 10 day rest coming off like a Thursday game, things like that. So, you know, Trenton Irwin is a the number four wide receiver for now and you know long time mainstay on the practice squad and worked his way uh, into the lineup but Yosevash was a guy they drafted this year 6'3 212 4 4 speed out of Princeton and uh, you know day three pick who could be a guy who finds himself singled up because the Bills they traded for Douglas but got to worry about Chase Higgins, uh, uh, Boyd now after after last week. So you know on the priority list, Yosevash always going to be dead last when he's out there, and I think that's why he's been able to catch these red zone touchdowns. He, he looks like he's a part of that red zone package mm. at six three two twelve because you know three yard touchdown in week six, two yard touchdown in week eight. So if you want a sneaky anytime touchdown bet. Uh, we'll see. I think lightning can strike three times in a row. And remember the luck rankings highly favor an over mm-hmm. in this spot. So, uh, you have, that's, that's what's beneficial either for five wide or just, you know, red zone opportunities. So going to go with, uh, the rookie Andre Yosevash. Yeah. I like it. He, uh, he tore up preseason and you know, if they, if they do decide to move on from Higgins, he could be the guy that takes over. Yeah, what's the other dude that's uh, uh Charlie Jones who's Charlie Jones. Punch, but he's on the he's been on the IR. Yeah, so he has a torn labrum. Yeah, this is basically a red shirt year for him. Yep. But uh let's see, what were Yosef Ash's yeah, because I remember him tearing up the preseason. Uh yeah, 12 catches for 129 and a touch, 27 targets on 82 routes. Oh wow. Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize the, he was getting targeted that much. His his props were like in the forties. Uh anything over twenty uh receiving yards for a preseason prop is uh borderline elite, but you know, 40, he was getting like 40 and a half as his uh prop. Yeah. And real. I think the upside with a guy like this, or a rookie like this is he already has like a fantasy friendly dart throw role, you know, just reds that big red zone mm-hmm. threat from a good quarterback, but there's at least a puncher's chance that he's, you know, doing enough in practice to perhaps overtake, Irwin, even if it's just for a few snaps and you know that could be very yeah. valuable when you're talking about a guy you know near min price so and yeah, if, going, uh, if any of the top three receivers get banged up in the game obviously you don't want to root for that uh he, he would probably be the one to step up if it were higgins or chase were to ever miss time uh maybe Irwin would step in for boyd i, I don't really know how that would work out but uh he does have some upside this year if any of those three receivers do miss time 